You are listening to Torah Treasures, a messianic perspective on the weekly Torah portion, featuring Rabbi Jason Sobel. This week's Torah portion is Parashat Shemot. In Exodus chapter 3, we read the following. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why does the thorn bush not burn up? The Torah specifically states in Exodus 3, 1 through 4, that God revealed himself to Moses from the midst of a burning thorn bush. Why does the Torah mention this fact? Why might the Lord have chosen a thorn bush? Why is it significant that the bush was not consumed? What is this meant to teach us? Beginning in Genesis chapter 3, thorns are associated with hardship, suffering, and exile. Thus, it is no surprise that God commissions Moses to redeem Israel out of the Egyptian exile from amidst a thorn bush. Commenting on this point, the Midrash says, Why from the midst of a thorn bush and not from the midst of a large tree or from the midst of a day tree? The Holy One, blessed be He, said, I wrote in the Torah, I am with Him, Israel, in His distress. Psalm 91, 15. They were placed in thorns of slavery. Therefore, I too will reveal myself to them in the bush which is all thorny. Midrash Tanhuma Shemot 14. By appearing to Moses in a thorn bush, God is communicating to Israel that he has heard their cries and identifies with their suffering. When Moses shared this reality with his enslaved sisters and brothers, they were overwhelmed. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had commanded to Moses. Then he did signs in the sight of all the people. So the people believed, and they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he looked upon their affliction. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Exodus 4, 30 and 31. The Lord is attuned to the pain of his children, and like every loving parent, wants to alleviate it. This is an awesome fact that should give us pause and cause us to praise our Heavenly Father. The fact that the Creator of the universe sees our pain and cares is truly amazing and should be a source of comfort for us in difficult times. It is also important to remember that God not only is aware of Israel's pain, but also takes action by sending Moses as his agent to liberate his children. Part of our covenantal responsibility, both as individuals and as a community, is to identify with and alleviate the suffering of others. In so doing, we emulate the Lord who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalm 147. Commenting upon this, Rabbi Michael Lerner writes, The God revealed to Moses at the burning bush passionately insists on saving the entire people of Israel from their fate as slaves. God is available, actively calling to us from the burning bush, a fire that does not destroy but energizes to join in transforming the world. Our task is to hear the voice to recognize God's availability to us, to make space for it in our lives. This mystical experience is tied to an ethical and political awareness in a way not typical of most mystical systems. What Moses understands is the true nature of the universe, that spiritual enlightenment and moral obligation to struggle against oppression are not two separate things. They are inextricably linked together. Thus, one of the key lessons that we learn from the burning bush revelation is that a key part of our divine mission 
is tikkun olam, which involves partnering with God in the healing, repairing, and redeeming of the world from the forces of sin and oppression. The greatest example of this is Yeshua, who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and who associated with and elevated the most despised segments of society. May our ears also be sensitive to the cries of others, and may our hands be quick to gently wipe the tears from their eyes, as our loving Lord has done so often for us. By doing this, we in part fulfill the words of the Elenu, Litakain Olam Bimalkut Shaddai, to perfect the world under the sovereignty of the Almighty for Messiah's glory.